we have to discuss the concept of stationarity because stationarity form the basis, the basis of mean reverting strategy. A time series is called stationary if it doesn't wander off to infinity uh, as time goes on. Now, a, run, a random walk or a geometric random walk for those uh, who are sophisticated is not a stationary time series. So, for example, let's look at the price of gold as represented by the ETF GLD. It is undergoing what we call a geometric random walk, and this is the time series. Uh, it doesn't seem that uh, it will ever stop going up. Okay. And similarly, if you look at the gold mining uh, stocks, ETF, GDX, it shows a similar uh, behavior. There's no particular uh, uh, pattern to it. It just look like a, a random walk, going farther and farther from the mean. Okay, however, here is an example of a stationary time series. You can see that it doesn't, it, it show a distinct pattern. In fact, the pattern is obvious that you can call it mean reverting because it looks like it is always going, you know, whenever it's very far from, let's say, an imaginary line here, it tend to come back. It's very mean reverting. And um, now, if a price series that we trade is like that, it's stationary, uh, it is obvious that we can trade it quite simply by a mean reversion strategy. What is a simple mean reversion strategy? Well, you must have heard of it. It's just buy low and sell high, and vice versa. Short it when it's high and buy cover when it's low. Just doing it over and over again will earn you unlimited profit. And in fact, that's what a lot of statistical quantitative traders do. Right? Mean reversion strategy is one of the you know, basic money makers, uh, uh, you know, have been for many years for quantitative traders. But how do we know whether a time series or price series is suitable for this kind of strategy? Not every price series, as we've seen, most price series are not mean reverting and they're not stationary. So how do we uh, test very quickly to see if a price series fit this criteria so that we can trade this mean reverting strategy? Well, that brings us to what is called the ADF test. It's a statistical test which tests whether the change in price in the next period, next period meaning next bar, it could be five minutes bar, it could be 10 minutes bar, but whatever it is, let's look at the change in price in the next bar. Is that going to be proportional um, to the difference? between the current price and the mean price. If it is not proportional, it is a random walk, right? A random walk, the price change in the next uh, time period is independent, it's, it's a white noise. You could not predict what the next uh, price changes. It could be positive, it could be negative, it could be zero. But for a stationary price series, it is predictable. In fact, it is going to be negatively proportional. It is going to be negative proportional to the current price, to the difference between current price and the mean price. Or to put it out, out, out of way, it is proportional to the mean price minus the current price. As if the current price is very low compared to the mean price, the change in the next period is likely to be up. Right? So that's what mean reversion means. If it is below the mean, it tends to go up. If it is above the mean, it tends to go down. That's why it revert to the mean. So it will revert to the mean only if there is a proportionality constant that is different from zero and is particularly negative. So the statistical test is actually capitalized on this observation. It is testing whether the regression coefficient between the uh, x, the next period price change, and the current difference between the mean and the uh, price. And if we can reject the null hypothesis that that proportionality constant is zero, then there's a likelihood, there's a good likelihood that this price series is stationary, that it is mean reverting. I'm using mean reverting and stationary synonymously uh, in this at, in, at this point. Okay, so that's called the ADF test. It's nothing but a statistical significant test of the regression coefficient to see if it is zero or not. Now. 
it's good that we have such a test, but unfortunately, if you run it on most time series, you will find that it does not, it cannot reject null hypothesis because most time series are not stationary. We have seen the example, GLD is not stationary, GDX is not stationary. If you apply it to SPY, it's, you're going to find that it's not stationary also. So what's the use of having a test when it, most of the instrument fail this test? Well, not to despair because we can construct a portfolio. We can construct a price series where it is stationary. All you need to do is to find two instruments, maybe Apple versus Microsoft, maybe uh, Exxon versus uh, Chevron. Uh, maybe Citibank versus uh, uh, JP Morgan. A portfolio of two similar stocks, one long and one short. You cannot be both long. It had to be typically one long and one short in some proportion. And if you test this portfolio, sometimes you will result in a stationary price series for the portfolio. The price of the portfolio represents the net market value of the portfolio. Okay, what we call a price is actually more accurately the net market value of a portfolio of multiple stocks. Some of them are short, some of them may be long. And so we can apply the ADF test to this portfolio and you will sometimes find that this portfolio is stationary. And if that's the case, the instrument themselves are called co-integrated. The portfolio tie series itself is stationary but the individual instruments are not, but they can they are called co-integrated because when you put them together, they can be stationary. So they themselves, the instrument themselves are called co-integrated. A good example of a, uh, a, a number of co-integrated stocks would be GLD and GDX. In particular, if you construct the portfolio by long one share of GLD and short 1.6 shares of GDX, you'll find that the resulting portfolio is pretty stationary over some period of time. Uh, here you have seen this price series again. I didn't tell you before, but this price series is in fact formed by shorting 1.6 shares of GDX and long one share of GLD. And you can see that lo and behold, at least during that period, one and a half year period, that portfolio is very, very much mean reverting. Okay, so to recap, what are co-integrating stocks? Well, co-integrating stocks are the stocks that can be chosen, that, that can be used to form a stationary portfolio. And a stationary portfolio is suitable for a mean reverting strategy. Buy when the portfolio is cheap and sell when the portfolio market value is high and vice versa. So you trade the portfolio as if you were trading an ETF, okay, or trading a single stock. And um, okay. Co-integration is a fancy term, but most of you have heard of correlation, right? If you have studied basic statistics, you will no doubt have heard of correlation. Well, they are different concepts. They are not the same. Correlation is typically concerned about the short-term return of two stocks and whether they are in the same direction. The short-term return could be minutes, hours, days, weeks, or even months. But nevertheless, it's concerned about returns over some period. But co-integration is not much about return. They are not interested in whether Coca-Cola and Pepsi go up at the same time. They're not interested in whether Google and Apple go up over the same period. What they are concerned with is whether the two price series diverge over the long term, not one day, not one month, but over a long time period, whether they, the two price series tend to converge or diverge or remain co-integrated. If they diverge, then it's not going to be co-integrated. For example, Coca-Cola and Pepsi have a fairly high significant daily returns correlation coefficient of 0.48. It is statistically significant. They move up and down at the same time, half the time, very, very significant. But interestingly, they don't co-integrate. Over a long period, they their spread, what's, what we call the spread, you know, which is, we essentially the portfolio of long one share of Coca-Cola and short 1.01 shares of Pepsi. That's that's its portfolio, or sometimes sometimes people call it the spread. Uh, this net market value of the portfolio is what people refer to as the spread, by the way. And this spread doesn't seem mean reverting at all. If you look at it, it 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 for a long period of time, for eight years, it just keeps going down. So despite the fact that the Coca-Cola and Pepsi move up and down 
half the time during the each day, they are not co-integrated. If you form this portfolio of uh, long short portfolio, the spread is not stationary. You cannot trade it in a medium earning strategy. Okay, so the two concepts are different. So even it's even clearer if we illustrate it with two hypothetical time price series. So stock A is the one on top with a blue line, and stock B is the one at the bottom with the red line. These are the daily prices, and you can see that I've constructed these two stocks so that they are co correlated. When stock A goes up, stock B goes up. When stock A goes down, stock B goes down. They are quite, their returns are very correlated. Okay, but now here is a example of two co-integrated stocks that are not correlated. A and C. So the stock A uh, is again the uh, the one in a blue line, <clears throat> but the stock C is the one in a green line. You can see that when stock goes uh, stock A goes down, stock A may go up. When stock C goes down, stock A may may go up. So they are not correlated. Maybe anti correlated. But sometimes when stock C doesn't move, stock A still go up and down. You know, sometimes they go in the same direction, so they are not fully anti-correlated either. Because here, when stock C is going down, stock A is also going down, and so here, when stock C is going up, stock A is also going up. So overall, you can see that they don't have any significant correlation of returns. They sometimes go in the same direction, sometimes go in the opposite direction, sometimes one doesn't move and the other moves. However, if you look at the spread of these two stocks, these two hypothetical stock, you know, which is this stock C minus stock A, you'll find that this spread is very much mean reverting. It start off positive, become very positive, becomes less positive again. It cross, it become negative, go to zero, become very negative, go up and back to zero, and then become small, small positive again. So if you can spot the spread of A and C, you will find that this spread is very, very mean reverting. So these two time series are very much co-integrated because they can be made to form a stationary portfolio, but they are not at all correlated because they can move in very different direction from day to day. And so to recap, co-integration is a very long-term behavior. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's looking at the long-term behavior of the prices and correlation is looking at the short-term behavior of the returns. Co-integration is about price, correlation is about return. So what are the kind of mean reverting strategies we can use? There are several, but the basic one that every that everybody should know is based on Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands is essentially using moving average to determine the mean, right? You, if you have a mean version strategy, you need to know what the mean is. So the mean in this case of the Bollinger Band strategy is given by moving average. But also in a mean version strategy, you need to know when is the entry level. The entry level in the Bollinger Band is determined by this volatility of, return, uh, of the price series. Or in other words, you can measure it by the multiples of standard deviation or basically one standard deviation. You know, if the multiple is one, then you are entering if the price is away from the moving average by one standard deviation. What is this standard deviation? How is it measured? This standard deviation is also measured by moving window. So typically the Bollinger Band has a one single moving window that can compute both the mean and the standard deviation. And they are used to determine both the the mean of the mean version strategy as well as the entry level. And after you enter into position, if the if the price mean revert to the mean, you will exit. Now this mean is changing because the mean is a moving average, so it's changing all the time. When it exit, there's no guarantee that it's profitable. It could still be unprofitable. This is a subtle point that we'll discuss in the course. Um, but nevertheless, you will exit whenever the price go converge to the moving average of the price. How does that work for AUDCAD? Wonderfully. Now, given that this is old backtest, you can try it now. And also there's another caveat that is this is without transaction cost. Transaction cost is usually what kills a meaningful strategy. On paper, it might look very good, 
but once you add in the appropriate transaction cost, which not only include the commission, but also the bid ask spread sometimes, uh, you will find significantly less wear result. So do not be overly excited by this graph. Okay, and similarly, even for the euro versus uh, Swiss franc, uh, it is also very nice uh, equity curve. Okay, again, given without transaction cost. 